stabbing me in my back. Jealousy, covetousness, hate. Oh my. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. It'd be nice for some of you to join us. Okay, listen. God is expressly dealing with people who are having problems with other people. And there is a thing called backstabbing, a thing called undercutting, a thing called be throwing someone under the bus. And the scripture God led me to made me cry this morning because I know he wants to comfort his people. He wants you to know that he is totally aware of what's going on. And he's got every master plan set up possible to cover you and handle your enemies. So I am getting ready to read. I want you to go with me to Psalms chapter 22. And we're just reading a portion of it hmm, from 1 to 24. And then we're going to let the word tell a story after that. But right now, starting at verse 1, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Before I go any further on that, many of you who know scripture, who know the four gospels, knows, I mean, many of you, you know who said that. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross. So just to re reiterate right in here, Jesus is our high priest and he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. For some of you who think God is so far away, he is out of touch. No, baby, he's right there in it with you. He's in the trenches with you. Jesus knows what it means to hurt what it means to be victimized, what it means to be treated with contempt, disrespected, ostracized, rejected. He came to his own and his own received him not. Okay, now let me continue reading. Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not and in the night season and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and they didst, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despised of thy people, of the people. All that see me laugh me to scorn. Now, let me stop there real quick. This is for some of you who, <clears throat> some of you who have had years of mistreatment, years of being treated with contempt. Some of you have felt, spent your life feeling like the butt end of every joke. You feel like the church treats you like a joke. The job treats you like an, like a second class citizen. Your family treats you like an alien. You feel like this has been a mark on your forehead that, that makes you a target. And the hurt goes on as the beat goes on. All right, let me continue reading. Seven, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, uh, he trusted in the Lord that he should deliver him or let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me to hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Some of you are going through all kind of crap right now. But you're not in it alone. Let me continue reading. For there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and as a, as a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. 
My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. How many of you have been so heavy laden, have been hurting so bad, have have felt like not only giving up, but giving up on life, giving up on God, giving up on everything. This is what this feels like. It's a heavy load to bear. But Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, you guys, I'm feeling this so strong. I don't know who this is for, but something either has happened, has been happening, is happening, or will soon be happening to some of you. And you remember this message when the when the crap hits the fan. Remember this message. God wants you to know past, present, and future. You are never alone. You always have hope in him. He is a very present help in need. He's a present help in trouble. He is right there when you need him. You're never alone in this. He will never leave thee, leave thee, nor forsake thee. Forsake and leave is like another way of saying forgetting all about and abandoning and leaving you in a lurch. That's not the God you serve. 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Ooh, sometimes you feel like you're coming apart at the seams. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. This right here is a prophetic statement because that also happened to our Lord and Savior on the cross. I may tell all my I may tell all my bones they look and stare at me they part my garments that's another one Jesus went through they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture but be not thou far from me o lord o my strength haste thee to help me deliver my soul from the sword my darling from the power of the dog save me from the lion's mouth for, and you're going to hear about the lion's mouth in a minute at, on the next uh, on the next story. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. Now, you are not talking to a God who's deaf. You're not talking to an insensitive, indifferent God. You're talking with a God who is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. You're talking to a God who knows what you're going through, who feels the compassion. His compassion moves him to run to your rescue. You're not at the liberty or let's say at the mercy of your opponents. You're not at their mercy. They can't determine your future. They can't determine what's going to happen with you. Bottom line, you lean harder and harder and harder on God. You handle the discrepancies of life and the, the, the uh, inequalities of life God's way. Through mercy, through love, in righteousness, in holiness, and integrity. And while you're doing that, doing it God's way, God will handle your way that lies ahead of you. God will handle your enemies. You don't have to handle them, y'all. You don't have to tell them off and put them in their place. God will handle them. Some of your enemies, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm feeling a prophetic anointing on this one. Some of your enemies are getting ready to be exposed.
exposed, y'all. I mean, God's going to pull their skirt, male or female, up above their 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 waist and show the, the filth in their hind parts, the filth in their spirit, the filth in their intentions. God's going to manifest and he's going to expose your enemies. But you must be quiet. You must be still and wait on the Lord. God is going to come to your rescue and he's going to vindicate you. Expect that. Keep your mouth shut. How does that song go? Let me be quiet. Let the Lord fight my enemies. You've got to wait on the Lord going through this. you got to cry out to him. Pour your heart out to him. Don't try to handle it on your own. You will make matters worse. It will explode in your face. Hands off, mouth shut. Be still. Cry out to God. Every moment, every second, cry out to God. But you be still and wait on God to handle it. He will. I'm going to tell you a story about how he will. There was a lady that I worked with, that I worked on at my salon. Uh, she had a uh, boss. Now, this lady was extremely intelligent, y'all. I mean, she was, her, her initials are JW in case she ever hears this message. I will not put her name or her business out there, but her initials are JW. Beautiful spirit, highly intelligent, loves the Lord. And listen, <laughs> this woman was rings around her supervisor. Her supervisor, I don't know how she got the job. She may have just known somebody that stuck her in there, but she was obviously not qualified. She would share some of the, of the notes she would pass around on the computer to her staff and the words she used. I mean, she was putting words in the, in the, in Webster's dictionary that never existed. We would crack up uh, uh, listening to how poor her communication skills were. Yet she was extremely critical of my friend JW, extremely uh, critical, extremely uh, debasing. Uh, she would treat her with the utmost of disrespect and contempt and make her, you know, try to make her, try to humiliate her every time during the staff meetings. All in all, nobody really knew that what made her job go as smoothly as it went was the one she was she was putting down the one she kept under her thumb. She didn't realize that, the supervisor. So as time went on, we would pray, we would pray. And, and I told her, I said, God might be getting you ready for promotion. Well, she didn't really want the promotion. She liked her job. She just wanted to get rid of who was over her because she was tired of dealing with that. It made, it made the job a, a tedious, arduous task. And she wanted to enjoy the things she loved doing. So after a while, we would pray about it. Every time she'd come to get her hair done, we'd talk about it. We'd pray about it. Next thing you know, guess what? Boss lady was in the wind. God got rid of her real quick. Exposed her. Exposed a lot of the, the um, inconsistencies and fallacies. Oh, yeah. Got rid of her big time. And this lady was able to enjoy her job in sheer bliss. <laughs> so just to let you know, no matter how bad a person tries to make you look, no matter how bad people naysay you behind your back, how bad they are of an image they try to paint of you, sometimes it's because they're threatened by you. They know that they can't hold a candle next to you and they want what you got. If they could, they would take all that you got including your husband, kids, or your wife and kids, or your business, or your ministry, or whatever it is that you got, or your talents and gifts. They would take it all if they could, even your looks, some of you. But guess what? God's in control. And as long as you handle things God's way, you are in the ark of safety to stay. Listen, Daniel, I want you to hear this story. This is the one God led me to this morning, clear as a bell. 
one of the few times I got a very clear leading. And when I read this, I knew what God wanted to do. God wants you to know he's got your back. He's running ahead of you to make the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight. God knows how to remove the obstacles. He knows how to remove the road barriers. He knows how to remove the, the hindrances and the delays and, and every, everyone out there running interference with your destiny. God knows how. To elevate you as you, you know how the Bible says he will make your enemies your footstool. He'll have you step up on that footstool. And what will that footstool be made of? Cushion, wood, and four legs? No. Your footstool will be the backs of your enemies. You will step, I'm seeing it. You will step up on the backs of your enemies as they bow down to the ground. Because God will knock them down in position. He wants them with their behinds up in the air. And their faces facing the ground. God will handle your enemies. All right, listen. <laughs> wow. Listen, no matter what people have aimed against you, no matter what little strategy or what little plan. And let me put a warning out here before I read this. Let me put a warning out here for those of you who are planning who are scheming, who are positioning yourselves, who are strategizing to stab, destroy, and remove from the premises the one that you want to replace, the one who God has placed in position and you want everything they've got. But then God will handle you. You better stop now. You better cancel your plan. You better remove your devices, baby. You better sit your little happy hips down, say a prayer of repentance or apology, and then truly repent. Change the course, baby. Change the direction you're headed in because you're headed in a, in a road of destruction. God's got nothing but harm set up in front of you. If you keep trying to set the path for this person to be harmed by your devices, you watch yourself. All right. Mm. Starting at verse one, it pleased Darius. Now, let me just say this real quick. I don't want to tell the whole story from beginning to end, but Darius was the king. And Daniel had favor with Darius after a run of events. And I'm going to start at verse 7, I believe. Daniel had favor with the king now. The king really liked him. He really honored him. Even though he didn't, he didn't serve the same gods, he honored Daniel. See, when, when you're in favor, when you're in God's good good favor, when you're in a good place with God, when God delights in you, he also gives you favor with authority. He gives you favor with man. He'll make your enemies at peace with you. But there are some enemies that are determined, no matter what God wants to do in your life, they are determined to bring you down. And they will position themselves, buddy up, rub elbows with you, smiling faces. Sometimes pretend to be your friend, smiling faces. Show no traces of the evil that lurks within. Smiling faces, smiling faces sometimes. They don't tell the truth. Listen, y'all, smiling faces can be ruthless. Smiling faces can be the people in your own family. Smiling faces can be those working side by side with you. Those smiling faces can have a smile while they have daggers and guns in their hands behind their back, waiting to pounce on you at the most undiscerning no moment. I made a word up, so just, just go with it. So listen, let me read verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdoms, the governors and the princes, the counselors and captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue. Why are they doing this? Because they don't like Daniel. They don't like the favor he has with the king. They don't like him having all these rights and all this authority that the king gave to him. So they want to bring Daniel down. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. 
So what they did was, okay, they're scheming. I got to go back a little bit. I was trying to cut it short for the sake of time, but I got to read some of this. Okay. Verse, okay, three. Then this Daniel was preferred by the king now, preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. Now, let me say this. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm glad I went there. <clears throat> Some of your enemies don't like you because of your excellent spirit. They don't have it. They couldn't have it if they paid millions and billions for it. Because they don't realize that comes from God. That comes from a close relationship with God. That comes from having your life, your heart, your spirit, your body touched by God. They don't get that. So they resent those that have a perfect spirit. And that's what happened with Daniel. Just like kids in school, I'm trying to set a little groundwork real quick so you see what God is getting ready to do and why you have enemies. New levels, new devils. When you are in school, for example, you're in elementary school, you notice the kids that give the smart kids the hardest time are the dumb kids or the kids that think they're dumb. They give the smart kids a run for their money. They pounce on them with all fours. They bully them. They pick on them. Why? Because the ones doing the picking are really the small, insignificant ones. And they know it. And they don't like you outshining them. Now listen, verse 3. Then Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king brought a thought to set him over the whole realm. Oh my goodness. And you're going to promote Daniel on top of it? Oh no, we ain't having this. Oh no. Why didn't you ask me? Why didn't you ask her or him? No, baby. It ain't going down like that. We going to bring Daniel down because we don't like him getting all your attention and all your favor. Oh no, 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 no. Number four. Then the presidents. And princes sought to find. Then these, verse six, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute. And to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save thee, except thee. That's what save thee means, except thee. O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. They were not, they could care less about the king. They could care less about his, his wherewithal. They were scheming to get rid of Daniel. And you will find some of you who are in positions of authority. You watch the people around you who are trying to spread all kind of suspicion because you and who are trying to set different rules. You will find if you really pray hard, God will show you they're trying to squeeze out the one you're trying to promote. You watch that. That's what they're trying to do. They're not watching your back, baby. They're not looking after your, your dream. They're not looking after your goals and, and your corporation or whatever it is you're running, your ministry. They're looking after themselves. They don't want anybody taking something that they've been wanting because they're covetous and they're jealous. They don't want the favor that you're sharing, that you're showing to that person that you're getting ready to promote. So they're going to try to woozy up real close to you so they can stop that from ever getting off the ground, baby. And they will do everything they can to make that person look bad in your eyes. They will do everything they can to make that person look insignificant, incapable, and totally unqualified. All right, now listen. Seven. Okay, we already read that. Eight. Now, O oh king, now, okay, now they're pleading with the king because they want him to sign this thing that they, this little scheme they set up to kill Daniel. That's what it's all about, y'all. Get Daniel out the picture because he is a thorn in their side. Now, O oh king, establish the decree and sign the writing. 
that it be not changed. Check that out. Make sure that it's not going to be changeable. See, they're really trying to seal this thing in, in cement so that Daniel will die and he will be completely out of the picture. People want that for some of you. They don't want you knowing how intelligent you really are. Some of you are married to people who put you down daily because they don't want you to get a clue of what's really in you or what you're really made of. So if they have you doubting yourself, questioning yourself and not believing in yourself at all, they got you right where they want you and you can never outshine them. All right. I'm telling you this, this whole thing is demonic, but God, but God. All right. Listen. Hmm. So they want him to establish a decree that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. In other words, it can't be altered. It can't be erased. It can't be canceled. It must be followed through no matter what. They're trying to lock him on. They're trying to put his rule on lockdown so that they can carry out their device. Nine. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. He didn't consult with God. So here we go. 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. What he was doing is his custom was to pray three times a day. His windows were open. You could see what was going on. You could see him in there praying. And he did it uh, this time the way he did before that decree was passed. In other words, he didn't skip a beat. He continued doing what he always did with God. He was faithful in spite of the threat. 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. That's what they were waiting for. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the decree, the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days except thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? Isn't that true? Ain't that what you signed, king? That's what that's about. The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. 13. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not the old king. They could care less about the king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. The reason I'm reading this and talking about it, so you can really see a real picture of how some people will devise your hurt, how they will scheme against you, how they will make you look as bad as they possibly can. And they're buddying up with leadership so that they can get it done as quickly as possible because they don't want you anywhere in the picture, let alone on the planet. All right. Why? Because you have a perfect spirit. You have a pure heart. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Now, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He was upset. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk through this. They let him know what, what uh, Daniel was seen doing, praying three times, but he wasn't praying to the king's God. He was praying to his own. So they are trying to tell the king, okay, so you know what you got to do because you can't change the rule. All right. So I'm saying this so I can skip down. Verse uh, 14, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He was so mad at himself for being so dumb, going for the okie doke, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Now he's determined, he's searching his heart, trying to find, how can I get Daniel out of this? Because he really loved Daniel and he labored till the going down of the sun. He was trying to figure out a way that he could deliver him. 15. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, what the law of the, whatever, that the law of the kings and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. 
16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Did we just not hear that in the other chapter? Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, now this is this is the king hoping against hope. Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Wow, wow, wow. You know that king did not want to do what he was doing. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of the lords, of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. The king, the Gentile king was fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. He didn't even get any sleep. Then the king arose early in the morning and went in, went, went in haste unto the den. And when he came, <clears throat> when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said, Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then Daniel, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king. So he was saying, innocence was found in me and you. We knew you didn't want to do this. Have I done no hurt? Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded, listen, listen, here it is right here. I love this. How God deals with our enemies who try to deal us out of the picture. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them their children and their wives and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den listen 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 y'all <laughs> then king darius wrote all people wrote unto all people nations and languages that dwell in all the earth Peace be multiplied unto you. I make, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Wow. He delivereth and rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth who have delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Listen, y'all. When God, what God has for you is for you. There's a song. What God has for me, it is for me. I'm hoarse. I'm not even going to try it. But what God has for you, it is for you. You hear me? If God seals it, it's a done deal. Trust me on that one. No monkey can stop your show. No conniving liar can cancel your blessing. No witch can curse your good. Trust me when I say that, y'all. What God has for you is for you. What I want to say also, besides those of you who have been hurt by these foolish people scheming against you, let me talk to the ones that God's going to use to help you elevate. You better keep your behind in prayer. You better stay before God's face. Stay up under his armpits. Keep your ear peeled to his heartbeat. Because if you are dumb enough to go with some of these schemes these people are pulling against the very people God has assigned you to bless, you will be having more problems than you need. Don't lean to your own understanding. I don't care who the people are. I don't care how long you've known them. You watch their motives. You pray that God expose them to you. 
before you buy into a lie that is bent on hurting someone else who does not deserve to be hurt. Now, this is what I have to say, and I'm almost done. For those of you who have been hurt again and again and again and again and again and again, ask God at every moment that those hurts happen to take the hurt out, number one, take it out, and to enable you to forgive. No matter what happens, if they need help, you help them. If they need something good done for them, you do good for them. Because when you do good to your enemies, the Bible says it's like pouring hot coals of fire on top of their head. They don't get the goodness that comes from you. They don't get it. It does not compute. But you do everything God's way no matter what. No matter what you're accused of. No matter what lies go around the grapevine about you. You stick to the course. You stay on that wall. You keep doing what you do. You keep serving God faithfully. You keep living that holy life faithfully, righteously, purely with an unfeigned love. You make sure that you stay genuine. You hear me? Because when you have God's favor, it trumps the world, baby. When you have God's favor, it trumps every curse in the universe. When you have God's favor, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I'm stopping right there. God bless you. Be encouraged. Stay in God's face. Whew. Thank you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Oh,